So not too long ago, at the time of recording this video, I played my very, 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 very first show ever, 10 years ago. So I thought in that honor of the 10 year anniversary of me playing my very, very first show ever, I thought, hey, why don't I make a top five favorite Ocean show kind of video? Uh, basically, this is just Ocean shows that I played under the name Ocean, doesn't include Re Revenge or anybody else that I might have stepped on stage with. Of course, this isn't the first time I was ever technically on stage 10 years ago. I did some competitions and I did some, uh, uh, I did some competitions and I did like a recital once, but that doesn't really count. I'm talking about strictly as a band. This was my first show I've ever played. So in honor of that, we're going to do a top five all time favorite ocean show list. I thought, why the fuck not? I have a list in front of me and brought up all the show flyers so you guys can see and starting at five is ice nine kills it was friday january 25th 2013 at the champ in lemoyne pa where i played the most shows ever like definitely uh anyway this is the reason that this makes my top five is not only ice nine kills is a really really good band and they keep growing and growing and getting way better i mean they've grown a lot since even then but um, they're like opening for Metallica and like Greta Von Fleet now, which is pretty insane. But these guys, even back in 2013, were selling out the champ like just about every goddamn time they came through on a tour. We got the opportunity to play in front of our very first like huge crowd. I mean, there was probably about 500 people there. It was sold out. I don't know the exact number, but that's just an approximation on top of my head. And yeah, it was just getting that first experience of playing in front of a huge crowd was just like an adrenaline rush it was definitely very uh very much an inspiration i guess you could say it's like all right you know and we got the crowd going and whatnot so it definitely was one of those big confidence boosters that i needed when i was 20 years old with a very fragile ego but it's not kills is really cool send them a bunch of times live ran into them a few times at shows and whatnot actually when i lived out in cali ran into them at their album release show at the state social house in west hollywood Really, really cool guys. Definitely go checking them out if you guys never have. So, moving on to the next show. Number four is Take It to Heart Fest. Okay, this this show was a lot of freaking fun. Uh, this was an all-local show up in, I think it was... Let me read the flyer here. Lewisburg, PA. I think it's pretty close to, like, Williamsport, PA. Maybe within a half hour or so. It's up kind of north-central, PA. From what I can remember off the top of my head. It was about a two-hour drive for me and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, just... The simple fact that there was a bunch of homies on this a lot of really good bands on here i can't say i remember defended or back to life i think that says josh morgan um I vaguely remember him i don't remember them or paper satellites fuck ocean of course the crier they were originally across from the seas literally the vocalist used to live right down the street from me so we used to hang out all the fucking time miss you matt by the way but yeah, we used to hang out, so we were like, we were close. That was probably the band that we might have been closest to when I was playing shows back in the day. Persona Grey, really fucking phenomenal band. Um, super, super, super cool dudes as well. The bass player, or no, he was a guitar player. Zach is in, if not for me now. We'll get to them in a minute. And then Behead the Betrayer, like I guess Deathcore you could say. Really, really, really down to earth guys too. Definitely go check them out if they're still around. I, I Even if they're not, I think they still have music out. Then Blind Bird was kind of like spoken word. Um, also, the lead vocalist of Road to Milestone was... That was his, like, side project. Really, really emotional, kind of like spoken word kind of stuff. It was really, really deep, good stuff. Moral Crude, I can't say I remember them. Dreamers Like Us, I think that was... I think that was Rose Show with Shell at one point, I think. Or maybe it's a completely different band. I don't know. I get a lot of bands like, kind of confused, but... Not that I was ever super close to this band, but they had a really good uh, sound to them and everything. I really liked them, and if not for me, probably my favorite local band in Pennsylvania, Central PA, maybe in the metal scene. Um, eh, Eternal Frequency, the brothers are right, right there too, but um, and and sister, and uh, but yeah, I love this band. Um, Hayden actually, he's the guitar player. He actually um, produced the first Ocean full-length record, and it sounds phenomenal and whatnot, and these guys have put out a full-length record, I think two EPs off the top of my head, I could be way off, but um, they're absolutely fucking phenomenal, definitely go check them out, 
whenever you can if you're in the area or if they're coming to your area then the road to milestone i mentioned them earlier as well with blind bird really phenomenal kind of like icy stars kind of band like so yeah i mean just just really 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 fucking dope bands they have a really good song called paper hearts i can remember off the top of my head it was really fucking good and um yeah but like what made this show really special besides like the bands being so good and you know it being basically a homely fest i guess you could say for lack of a better term um uh, nikki galbraith she was the promoter of this show shout out to her she has a band called renovar and if i said that wrong my bad if she's watching this i'm sure she'll message me and teach me how to say it she was a promoter for this show and uh, also what made it awesome at the end of the day was that she threw a dodgeball i guess i don't know what to call it we just played dodgeball at the end we were playing in this gymnasium which made it really cool too um as well but the dodgeball was just absolutely fun everybody just got involved and it's just bringing people together you know that's that's how it should be and then number three is the battle of the bands and let's see let's bring up a show flyer here okay yeah so this was the battle of the bands in 2016 december 16th 2016 at the champ of course burn cruise they were like a hard rock band ashes over sins they were like a kind of like a Black Veil Brides, Bullet for a Valentine Mix, kind of like Ocean, a little bit different, but basically the same thing, similar image to old school Ocean, I mean, I guess you could call it, was, yeah, Argument of Fools era Ocean, I guess you could call it now, um, yeah, really, really, really fucking fun band to play with and whatnot, they were fun to hang out with, Harbinger, Harbinger, Harbinger. I think they were kind of like a, it's hard to describe them. Uh, I forget exactly what they sounded like. I think they were kind of like Winds and Plague sounding. A Scarlet Sunset, that was one of my old bass players' bands. And he was also the singer and guitar player of that band. And then Fucked Up Band Ocean. Crossroads and Seas, this was before they changed their name to The Crier. I just mentioned them a little bit earlier in the video. Homies. What made it really fucking stand out to me is this was a final, as you can see right there. In the picture, as you can see in the photo, uh, it says the finals, and we actually fucking won it. This was our fucking third attempt at trying to win the Battle of Bands at the Champ. We did it in 2012, I think we came in second place, and then we did it the year before, and I don't even remember where we placed, I think we were like third or fourth that year. It was like, it was enough was enough, and we barely made it into this round too. We tied for third place, I think with uh, Harbinger, I think, the round before, so we barely made it into this final round. And so that, that really encouraged us to, like, step it up, get more people out to the venue, and, like, just kick ass. I think we shot a music video between the two rounds. I think it was, like, a matter of, like, three or four weeks between rounds. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but, yeah, we came out on top, and that is why it is in the top five at number three. Number two, that is ETF. Okay. So, Escape the Fate, uh, one of my favorite all-time bands. I would put them in my top ten. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I didn't even realize Asana was on this, but that's cool. I ended up playing with them at the Whiskey A Go Go. That was the very first time I played the Whiskey A Go Go. That's who I played with, and it was with the band Revenge, of course. I might have mentioned that before. Uh, really cool dudes as well. Homies, getting a little sidetracked here, but got to shout them out. Skyla Drive, one of the coolest post hardcore bands out there. Really dope dudes as well. Got to meet some of them. I saw the bear one, sworn in, signs and sailors, the funeral portrait, Michael relocate. So literally, really solid lineup so far. I ate heroes. Um, they were homies too at the harbor. They were solid. I remember a little bit within the outbreak. Uh, two of the members of Eternal Frequency, AJ and Dane. This is their old band. So yeah, we had a little bit of history with them. Fuck Ocean. It was just a simple fact. I was playing with a top. 10 favorite band of all time. Get the fate also was really awesome that night. And plus, on a side note. After the show, we actually ended up running into Craig and TJ there, pictured uh, in the front of this photo right here, uh, at a bar, and uh, they actually drank with us and whatnot, went to the bathroom to take a mean fucking piss, came back, Craig had a yingling right in his hand waiting for me, this is for you, never will forget that. Did, uh, just talked about a bunch of shit, talked about life, and it, it, it was just a good time, man, um, that's why that's number two for me. Okay, and uh, number one, numero uno, my favorite show of all time, under the name of Ocean, is 
Honestly, the farewell show. Now, I don't have a flyer for this, unfortunately. I don't know why. There was one made. I don't know what happened to it. I couldn't find it on Facebook. I do have some live video that I'm going to share with you guys in a minute. Yeah, uh, you would think, like, the farewell show right before I moved to California wouldn't be even in my top five. Maybe in the top five, you probably, you probably wouldn't think it'd be my number one show of all time. Considering, you know, I was leaving Pennsylvania. I haven't played a single show with Ocean since that point. The reason I, I chose this show as my number one is just because of the the pure like tightness of the set. Like I'm not trying to bash anybody in the band before or anything, but we had two fill-ins, one uh Brett from Ultraviolent and he's also in The Art of Deception and Avery also from Ultraviolent. He filled in on bass for us and of course Dylan stepped up and played guitar for us even though he was out of the band but you know, we rekindled our friendship at that point and uh, worked things out. And he played the show, which was really awesome of him. And he played very well. Of course, he always did, though. But I, I'm not going to lie, our drummers weren't always the best. But Brett really fucking brought it. And it made the band sound so much tighter. And it made me just want to not ever, ever settle for a drummer with any less skill, you know, ever. Also, too, like, there was a lot of people that showed up. I mean, not like that was like 500 people like Ice Nine Kills, but there was probably a good 30, 40 people there that showed up to see us and wish me farewell before I moved to California and whatnot. And just the camaraderie again, you know, the people just trying to like, you know, just make me feel at home, even though I was leaving, you know, it just, it, it warmed my heart that so many people cared to show up. And it, it, it was, it was just good, really good set. And whatnot. I forget who else played it, to be honest. I can't I can't remember the band names off the top of my head. Oh, Ultraviolent ended up playing as well, and they were really fucking good. So Brett played two sets, and every did too. So I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you've gotten to this point, then I really, really, really appreciate it. If you would appreciate it, subscribe if you guys are new around here. And if you guys would smash that like button, that would be awesome as well as hitting the notification bell. However, I decided to break up the live video of the Farewell Show into another separate video because it's a pretty lengthy section so if you guys would like to see that get this video to 10 likes and that'll be the very next upload on the channel until next time jams is out